Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From r &E Music, your mom and pop guitar shop and lesson studio deep in the heart of Canton, Texas. That's right. Not to be confused with any other part of Texas, which is large. And today we're going to answer your questions. Sounds good. Let's do it. First question, Kurgle Kreutzer. Have you ever considered adopting children or trying your hand at foster parenting? Your family would seem to be a good place for many <laughs> in this day and age. Number two, what kinds of things would you like to make better or see addressed more in the YouTube community? Cheers and thanks. Hmm. Good question. Why don't you answer that? Why don't I answer that? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have actually, <clears throat> it has been discussed casually in the past we've thought about it we always I think wanted to have the idea was like two boys and a girl and we stopped with two boys because <laughs> mm -hmm. Angela's pregnancies were challenging Very not that any of them are easy right but some people do have easy pregnancies yeah and some people have really tough ones and so for us um, we stopped with our two sons but we always wanted to have a girl so we've kind of talked about it in the past Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. We haven't talked about it recently. Um, have we? We've kind of talked about having, you know, doing the whole, the aged out kids a yeah. little bit. I've always wanted to do that because there's such a need for homes for kids that are aging out. And the thought of, you know, there's these adults that are walking around and they don't have any family to go home to for the holidays or to say, guess what? I'm engaged or I got a new job or can I have some help with this application or whatever? Just kind of saddens me, especially not having a place to go for the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, and just a place just to crash on the weekends after college or, you know, whatever to help them with just life. I, I've always lo I thought that it would be great to just officially adopt them before they aged out and then kind of just help them along the way. And whenever they needed a place to crash, they could just come home to us yeah you know <clears throat> we do know that we don't want to start over with a newborn no at this point like you know i would love somebody around the boy's age you know especially like aiden's age yeah either between them or younger like so. eight nine ten maybe ten mm -hmm. maybe <laughs> yeah but i don't want to go back to <clears throat> sleepless nights and you know feeding a baby three different that I did the no. feeding, but I did get up. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of moms that have never experienced childbirth and stuff like that. And having an infant is perfect, I think, for them just to go from the very, very beginning mm. through all that stuff. Because there's something about that that as a parent that you get to experience that is like no other. We did get to experience we that did. twice. And we loved it. And But, the, you know, there's a lot of children. But I had more energy are, at 25 than I do at 42. Yes. <laughs> But there's a lot of children that are out there that are, you know, even six and older that yeah. no one wants because they think that they're damaged or, you know. Everybody wants a baby baby. Yeah, so they can imprint their, you know, ideas and stuff. But there are still children that would like to have a forever home that are perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. All children have issues, even in regular homes, because all children grow up in life. And even when they grow up in homes that have are full of love. They still have to make decisions on their own to either accept that love or reject that love. So um, the idea for me personally, I would love to do that. Have kids that are have been older. kind of rejected and need help kind of coping with life and anger issues or whatever so that they can become functioning adults. So, yeah, we might revisit it. that once our boys are kind of, you know, our son, our oldest son is 18, our youngest is 13. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe when they're, when our 13 year old is closer to 18. I always felt kind of funny about, you know, bringing other kids, with our kids being young and other mm -hmm. kids coming in with no, dealing with whatever issues those kids might have growing mm -hmm. up in, you know, either drugs or abuse of all kinds and neglect and, and neglect and things and then trying to but you know if our boys are kind of older and maybe don't require quite as much attention mm -hmm. then we it'd be easier to focus on 
you know, a, a younger kid that's got, right. you know, issues that require a lot of attention. So mm -hmm. trying to balance the attention between our kids and, and other kids. So yeah. we've talked about it. So we'll see what the future holds. We'll we don't know. Uh, number two, what kind of things would you like to make better or see addressed more in the YouTube community? Oh man, um, that's a good question. Number one, I would like to see if I'm subscribed to a channel, I want to see their videos. <laughs> and I think we had a video just the other day, our last vlog I put it up and some of y'all saw it and you're like, hey, I just saw it on your page but I didn't get notified even when I published it. So, so even for us, we have videos that come out that even if you're subscribed and you click the little bell to get notifications, mm -hmm. you don't always get notified, which I think is silly. I mean, right. if people, if, if people's subscription feed is flooded with too much information, they themselves will go in and curate and delete the stuff they did. They don't, they don't really want to watch. Mm -hmm. At least I do. Right. If I see a buttload of videos from one channel that I'm like, I don't know why I subscribe to them and they just put 47 videos up in my feed at one time. I'm going to unfollow them. You know, I can, I can curate my own subscription feed. So I would like to see that, you know, with smaller channels that the people who actually do subscribe, you actually see the videos. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's my biggest thing maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe a little more <laughs> transparency on, there's still a lot of trolls and negative hate comments out there. And I would like to see more things be done to kind of eliminate that. Now, constructive criticism and having a discussion respectfully is one thing, but it's you know, hate and people will come out leaving comments like, go kill yourself. And like, you know, just blatantly hateful and racist and misogynistic commentary. I would like to see more of that stopped, mm -hmm. you know, or punished in some ways. Like, you know, we don't get a lot of that. That's not a big problem for us, mm -hmm. but it is a big problem for, for a lot, a lot of, of people. other people. So, um, you know, or not being able to hide behind a fake screen name. <laughs> if everybody had to use their real names and stuff, that might cut back on a lot of that kind yeah. of stuff. But, you know, mainly it's just the, the notifying people and letting people know that you've got something up. That's my main thing. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to see different? No. You don't watch as much YouTube as I do. Mm -mm. And what I do, I'm very specific about what I watch, so I don't come across a lot of ridiculousness because I filter quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Same thing with my Facebook page. Everybody's like, I can't stand Facebook. I'm like, you need to change your friends. <laughs> it's not Facebook. It's the people you hang out with because I don't have that issue <laughs> with my Facebook page. Most of my Facebook page is filled with recipes and dog videos and cat videos and humanitarian things like mm -hmm. that. I can get on Facebook and spend the whole day and not feel depressed. Yeah, you need to change your filters. You need to change your friends. <laughs> you, you can you can have friends Just unfollow them. That you can unfollow. You can hide their posts. You don't have to unfriend them. No, I don't delete people unless they're blatantly hateful and yeah. usually even then I don't I'm never friends with them in the first place, so I don't have to worry about that issue. It only happened a couple times but you know, it's the same thing. You, you can just, curate your You feed. just watch what you do because after a while, the amount of stuff that you watch goes into that algorithm and it says, okay, obviously you're this kind of person because you like this violence or you like this guy who makes fun of people or you like this guy who's, you know, a complete, you know, jackass. And it's just like you, you like this and it goes into the, and it tells you what kind of person you are. So it starts, Hey, you might like this person or you might like this video. And then it gives you this image of oh, the world sucks. Well, no, the videos you watch suck and the world is just fashioning your, the videos that they think you would see by what you already see in the first place. Yeah. You know, they're going to feed so. you what you're already feeding on. Facebook, YouTube, I think there's too Instagram. many people complaining about things and when they're the problem to begin with. Oh, there you go. Great <laughs> questions, Cargill. Thanks, man. Next question. Tori Griffin. Hello, Ryan and Angela. How do you feel about this 432, 528 hertz tuning thing? <laughs> I've had many artists come to the studio asking to change the drum tuning and all my guitars. It has drove me crazy. <laughs> all right. Uh, have you heard of this? Mm -mm. Like okay. I said. <laughs> yeah. Well, so this isn't anything I'm gonna that give would it, be on my radar. I'm giving a brief rundown. Normally, like 
when we tune your guitar or your piano, we tune mm -hmm. to A is 440 hertz. Okay. So A equals 440. Okay. Even on the little tuners, you can adjust that. Okay. So what some people are doing is they're tuning A to 432, which is slightly flat mm -hmm. from what normal kind of A is. Right. And there's people out there who believe like 432 is like the you know, the sound of the universe and your heart beats at this thing and water resonates at this yes. frequency okay. and all this other mm -hmm. kind of, you know, mumbo jumbo stuff. And it's like, yeah, it's not mumbo jumbo, it's actual science, but go ahead. Well, <laughs> it's them saying that stuff is not science. Right. Cause it's like, I looked it up. I, I haven't paid much attention to this. I just sort of casually just come across it. And I know some people who they decided to do a recording in 432 and they did one recording in it. And they're like, "This yeah, is a pain in the butt, man." To to try to get come back in and do overdubs with other instruments and things. It's like, well, your your instrument's not tuned right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but I'll, I'll link to an article that I read this morning that was interesting. It was kind of like separating fact from fiction of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about, well, you know, the they're talking about the heart beats of this, and it's like, well, your heart doesn't even come close to 432 hertz. It's like way lower than that. And they actually actually took some scientific measurements comparing it to what people say it means and then like things that really I'll link to that article and y'all can read that and ag agree or disagree. I think it's kind of silly because if you go back and do some research, like with Mozart, like his, his stuff wasn't tuned to 432. It wasn't tuned to 440 because mm -hmm. they actually, they dug up like the tuning fork that uh, the guy who made the pianos and harpsichords for Beethoven and Mozart, it was like 420. So their A's were tuned like even lower than that. But I think it's a little silly. Now, if you want to do it, and that's what the guy who wrote this article already today says, hey, listen, if you want to tune your stuff to that, go ahead. If you want to tune to 425, go ahead, whatever you want to do. But, you know, making it some mystical, magical thing, it's like, I don't, I don't think it really is. I think it probably is, we come to the point of just recording and making music. I think it creates more problems. Just write a good song. There's just tons of great music that was written to our what we call our standard 440 pitch mm -hmm. these days. So mm -hmm. I think it's a little silly, but if you want to do it, go ahead and do it. That's fine. Doesn't bother me if you do it. <laughs> Doesn't bother me if you don't do it. Do what you want. Dimebag Daryl, like Pantera's stuff was all tuned slightly, slightly flat. Like just because they thought it sounded cooler. Mm -hmm. So it sucks if you're trying to tune along, you've got to tune to the recording, but... Yeah. Do what you want to do, but I don't think there's any like super magical properties to it. Personally. Could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong in my life. Thanks for the question, Tori. It would be a pain in the butt if you had a recording studio and you're trying to work with yep. that tuning though, for sure. Next question, Walking Dead 1369. We all know by now that Ryan is a huge Metallica fan. I don't know. Have, have I given that? I think you're impression. Just a mediocre fan. I'm just, just an average. So, are there any bands that y'all love that you think are very underrated? For me, I'll throw out Thin Lizzy. Of late, it seems they are getting some love, but for a long time, they were just the guys that did Boys Are Back in Town. For anyone interested or curious, check out The Emerald. Hmm. Um, any bands that y'all love that you think are very underrated? Hmm. Oh my gosh, I couldn't name any bands that are underrated i don't listen to just obscure um maybe the what is it the waylon jennies is it the waylon the waylon jennies the jennies yeah they're like the folky music they're pretty good they're if you th if you saw them it's like oh they're like uh, dixie chicks but because they all play these great instruments and they harmonize with each other and stuff but they're called the Waylon Jennies. I mm. like them, but I don't think that they're underrated. I just think they just don't care. <laughs> they, yeah, they're popular or not. They just they just perform and they go to universities and perform and at clinics and stuff like that. But that's a tough question. I, I think most of the bands that I like are fairly popular bands and musicians. So I don't. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say. What you know, underrated to one person and underrated to another might be different things. So I, yeah. I don't know that I like anybody that's really underrated, obscure. I mean, if if they're obscure and nobody's really heard of them, 
that's not really the same thing as underrated. Yeah. You know what I mean? That just means no one's really heard of you. <laughs> um, not really. I can't think of, I can't think of anybody. Mm -hmm. That's like, I think they're amazing and everyone else hates them. <laughs> right. Like, um, what was it? The band from <laughs> Nickelback. Yeah. No, Nickelback Nickel is Back. super underrated, man. I was thinking like Millie Vanilli. Yeah. Millie Vanilli is so underrated. Yeah, they're, they're so talented. They're really geniuses. No one just gets they're it. They're ahead of their time. No one gets it. I like some bands you probably never heard of or that didn't get a lot of traction and didn't really go anywhere, but mm -hmm. I don't. Not I'm not in underrated, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, tough question. All right. I don't have a really good answer for that, but hey. I'd have to think about it. Yeah, for you guys and ladies watching, leave a comment of like, is there a band that you think, or an artist, that is very underrated and deserves more, you know, praise than they, they actually get? What would be more fun was maybe pick people who are overrated. <laughs> that that could be a, that might be a painful discussion for some people, though. Yeah, it would. But uh, leave a comment below who, who you think is underrated or over or over hmm um yeah thanks for the question man and final question so this one won't be an hour and 22 minutes this week mm -hmm. scott h question ryan do you have a preferred volume and tone control layout on your guitars and does that influence your buying decision for example do you like the single volume with a master tone or volume tone per pickup or some other arrangement or does it not really enter into the equation? Any special, anything special that you use on your EMG pickups, equipped guitars, or just standard pots and wiring that comes with the pickups? Just curious. Well, that's a great question, Scott, you know. Um, right now, I don't really care. I used to really be into the, the two volume, two tone, like on a Les Paul, you know, guitar. And I, I thought that was sort of the ideal situation layout because you had all these options. However, I never use them. 99% <laughs> of the time, I don't use my vault, my tone control to like, you know, mess with the sound. I'm usually pretty much full blast on the tone. And sometimes I do roll the volume a little bit, but um, mm -hmm. I used to be really into that. Although for the longest time, my Explorer was my main guitar and it had um, a volume, volume tone. But again, I never really used it. so. Not so much. It doesn't really matter now. I um, mean, you know, I have guitars with all these configurations. However, in my advanced age, now I am really appreciating the single volume, single tone. <laughs> like on this lovely CMG guitar, it's got a, just a single volume, single tone. Yeah, Schecter, single volume, single tone. I'm really enjoying um, that because just volume, tone that's it if you got to roll your volume off really quick you don't have to figure out which one it is mm -hmm. the problem i have with the other guitars i have a couple of guitars that have you know two volumes and two tones so it's got four knobs well some of them aren't the same <laughs> some of them the layout is backwards and depending on what guitar i'm playing i'm like oh crap which one is it because mm -hmm. my prs you know the four four pots is not the same as my washburn four pots which is not the same as you know angelo's epiphone you know, and it's not the same as the Schecter's. And so I get confused now because they have four, but they're not the same layout on the guitar. With the single volume, single tone, it's, it's super easy. So I kind of really like the single volume, single tone nowadays, but for me, it's not really a make or break. Like that's not, I'm not gonna buy a guitar because it has four or it has two or it has one. So, but I do enjoy the simplicity of the single volume, single tone. As far as the EMGs, uh, most of the guitars that I have have the wiring harness and pots that come with the EMGs. I can't remember which one it is, if it's the 500K or the 250K. But it's always, you know, if I buy a, a kit from EMG, I use EMG's pots in the guitar. So, there you go. What's better, two volumes or one volume? <laughs> is one of those easier or not? Look who it is. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Guess what we're doing? <laughs> I would never guess. We're I answering never. questions. Art's here. You should come like, poke your head over. Oh my gosh. Someone's Cameo. To, someone's here. We just finished the last question, so Wait, it's fine. We're, we're, we're about to wrap it up. up. <clears throat> Hello. You have to lean Good in morning. so we can 
Nobody wants to see me. It's Sark. Sure they do. Hi. <laughs> Y'all have seen him before. He's gotten a few guitars from us. This custom Acacia. Anyways. Well, you're just in time. We're about to wrap it up. I just came to look at number two. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. You can pick it up if you want. And there it goes. Covet and fondle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for the questions, Scott. And uh, all right, that's it for today. We got lucky with only four questions because we got stuff to do today versus last week where we had nothing that we needed to do. Oh, we still had stuff to do. <laughs> so if you guys have a question for next week, please leave it below. And we'll try to answer it, hopefully. If there's 50 questions, we're probably not going to answer all 50. I can tell you that. So... Um, <laughs> but anyways, ask your questions. We'll answer as many as we can within a reasonable time frame. And uh, and if you want an Arnie Music shirt, don't forget you can go to our link in the description for uh, our Teespring store. You can check that out and um, get you one if you want. Don't if you don't. It's cool. Whatever. Get no one. pressure. But you should probably get five. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you guys next week. So until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. The music needs you. And you need the music. Yeah, you do. And you need to buy some t-shirts and yeah, some guitars. Do. And we need to keep music alive for the next generation of beginning guitar players and drummers and pianists and ukuleleists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and let's keep encouraging these young players and beginning players of all ages to keep their music journey going. Let's be positive. Don't be, don't be a jerk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as hard as that is for some people. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.